Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. Today's lesson will show you how to create in Revit this lattice facade system. It's something we see in this example project. This is how it looks like from the outside. And from the inside it looks something like this. I also have here a close-up view of the same system. So essentially we have two layers. They are identical but the second layer is having a slight offset and that gives you this nice staggering effect. Let's see the end result in Revit. So that's layer number one on the outside, and that's layer number two there in the inside. The system is of course fully parametric. You can make those panels bigger or smaller. If I go here to this and do edit in place, select it, I can make it so instead of 300, the grid size will be 500 by 500 and you can see it has updated nicely even more if I select one of the panels in the system now I'm free now to change its dimensions so if I want this to be a bit thicker I can go down here and change the thickness radius to maybe 0.3 apply this and you can see now it's a completely different system even though based on still the same principle we will make this again from scratch now using Revit curtain panels and massing. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now and get tutorials like this coming to you every single day. Alright, let's get started. I will cancel this and then go to the file menu. We can now do new family. To make the curtain panel family for this system, we need to start from a particular template. It's this one here, curtain panel patterns based. Now the first thing to check is your grid type and grid dimension. If I go to the top view now, I can see now, that's the basic rectangular grid, just like we wanted. But the dimension is a bit big, let's change this back to 300, by 300 as well. Here we go. Let's do thin lines so we can see it clearer. And now, to make it easier to model things, I can now select this grid and then hide it by element. Next step, we need to plan out our panel, how we plan to model it. I have here a screenshot of the same system, and if you zoom way into one single panel here, the system seems to be a continuous object, but if you break it down into modules, one module will look like this. If I give the module a rectangular boundary, that's what the module will look like on its own. So, to create the module itself, I will need one single extrusion. Cut up a fillet cross sign. Let's make this happen. We can now go to the top view and start connecting our opposite points. So these two connected by a spline, and I can now turn this line into a reference line just so it won't show in the project when it's time for me to use this panel in there. Get the opposite set of points and also do another line. Make it reference line as well. You will know it's a reference line when it's green, and it has other surfaces surrounding it like this. Next step, we need to create four arcs. If we go back to the reference image, the first arcs will be something like this. And then we can of course mirror it to make the second arcs, and the third one, and the fourth one, and so on. So, to make that first arcs, we need to have three points. I will start the points command now and place new points on face. So one, two, three. We can now do the same for the other corner points. So second corner point, third corner point, and the last corner point. Each one will get an arc. I can now start connecting those points to make my arc. So these three can now be connected. That's the first arc right there. Do the same here. One more time below, and one more time over here. Now it doesn't look so bad, but as you can see, the dimensions need some correction. For the panel to look nice, I want this whole fillet across to be centered around the center point of the panel, this point right here. And for that to happen, I need to make sure, for example, this length is equal to that length, which is also equal to this one, and then equals to that one and so on. 
In other words, the shape has to be perfectly symmetrical. Let's see how we can do that. I can now select this point there. And under its properties, I can see that the measurement type is now normalized curve parameter. According to this measurement type, each point on this line will be given a unique parameter ranging from 0 to 1. If I drag this point to this end, for example, you can see now that parameter is getting closer to 1. If I move it the other way, closer to this other endpoint, this measurement is now closer to 0. A value of 0 0.5 will therefore give you the midpoint of this line. Now you can try and opt for the second measurement type, and that is segment length. But that means you will need to know the exact length of your panel side, the length from this point to this point. That's doable, but as you saw before, I also wanted to adjust the entire size of the panel. If I did this measurement dimension by segment length, I will have to keep going back to this family and change the value here. That's not convenient. So for this example today, we will use normalized curve parameter. And let's say we put this at 0 0.45. It means however long this line is, this point will always be close to that line's middle point, but slightly off to the side. The question here is which side it will be moved to. In this case, I want this point to be moved to the left of this line's middle point. But as you can see, if I put in here 0 0.45, it's moving to the other side, and that's because this parameter is measured from the wrong endpoint. To fix this, I need to go down here under Measure From and change this value to End. Now, if I put in here 0 0.45, it's going in the right direction. That means, according to this point now, this endpoint is parameter 0, this other endpoint is parameter 1. The midpoint is somewhere here, at parameter 0 0.5, and this point has located itself at parameter 0 0.45, slightly to the left of the middle point. Let's do the same for this other one here. I can actually change this to also 0.45. There we go. We can now do this six more times. So, for example, this next one, try 0 0.45, wrong direction, flip this, and re enter the value. Because that other one was wrong, this one should be correct in terms of measurements from. So I can just do 45. Next one here. Here we go. As you can see, it takes a bit of trial and error because sometimes it's not clear to know from which endpoint this parameter is measured. But eventually, we have this done. Next step is to control the location of those points in the middle, these four, to make sure our arcs look nice. We need something like this, more or less. This is when we need to make use of a parameter. Firstly, let's get them to the same on-curve parameter first. If I now select this one, the parameter is now 0 0.66. This one here, the same value more or less. This one as well. It's using a different value because the measurement from parameter is not right. We can now flip this to the other endpoint. And now that's 0 0.625, more or less the same. This last point as well, we have to flip the endpoint and maybe type in here 0 0.66. So, they roughly have the same parameter on their host lines. Let's select them all like this and type in here the same value, 0 0.66. And we can also link this to a new parameter. I will call this one center point parameter. Okay. That will make sure they are always equally spaced out from the center of my panel. We cannot do the same for perimeter point, so select the eight points like this and turn this 0 0.45 to another parameter boundary point parameter. Okay, I can now also start connecting them in pairs. So these two connect with a line 
these two as well. It's hard to see the new line because it's overlapping the existing green reference line, but it's there. So we can keep going. One more line and the last line here. If I now select this, that will give me a chain of lines. If I isolate it, you will see this will be the sketch of our extrusion in this panel. Before the extrusion, however, let's turn them all into reference lines. Here we go. I can now click on them again and do create form. Make sure we use extrusion, not surface. And of course, the thickness of the extrusion, I can also link it to another value, maybe 25. And also another parameter. Simply call this thickness. Let's see it in 3D now. And we can start flexing our parameter, see how they affect our form. Thickness is an obvious one. I can make it thicker if I like. But for now, 25 looks better. The key parameters are down here. Boundary point parameter, if I change this and make it smaller, maybe 0.3. You can see our wings of the panel solid is a bit thicker now. And we can do the same here. If I turn this into 0 0.75, the middle bit also gets thicker. It's all under your control. For now, I quite like the previous value. So let me undo this. And also put in here now a parameter for the material of this extrusion. We can simply call this panel. All right. Now this family is ready for a test. We can now go back to the project. This one here. Now this is where you can make your choice. You can either do this in a separate massing family and then load the family into here, or you can do this in an in-place mass. For now, I will do what I did here, which is using in-place mass, because then it will be easier for me to align my mass to my existing building but the choice is yours. So I have this already on this side of the building. Let's do the same on the other side. We can now go to massing inside and do an in-place mass. Call this whatever you like and then start drawing a surface. We need to start from a model line first. Draw this on a work plan and set the work plan now to be this top face of the floor. I can now start drawing from this endpoint, going all the way to here. It's a bit hard to see, so let me turn into hidden line mode. And there's our new line. We can now extrude this by doing create form. Again, a bit hard to see, so I will do wireframe. And that's our top of the surface. We can now drag this a bit down, go back to hidden lines mode and make sure this line should be aligned to the bottom face of the wall above. I can now do align, tap select this bottom face of the wall, and then select my line. Here we go. Now remember, we wanted our panel to be of 300mm by 300mm in size. So it's best to have this entire length of the surface, a multiple of that dimension. I can now go to here and change this to maybe 9 meters, just so we have an even number of panels along the length of this surface. We can now select the surface itself, press tap if you have to. When it's highlighted, press divide surface. And now we can define the dimension of our grid. For the U grid, change this to fixed distance, and then put in the panel size you need, in my case it's 300. Do the same here now for the V-Grid, also 300. You can now click on this little icon here. That shows you the justification point of this system. By default, it's at the center of the system, but I usually do it from a corner point. So I can just drag it there. That means my whole panel will start from there and then get copied across the width and length of the surface, just to give me a more predictable outcome. All right, it's time now to select that surface again and change the pattern to use our curtain panel. Now these two, they are the ones I use on the other side. We need to now go back to our new curtain panel family and let's save it with a good name, panel three, and load it back into the project. 
because I've done that, I can now select this surface and panel 3 will be down here. Simply select it now and that has generated nicely. That's our first layer of the system done. Let's now do the second layer. I can now finish this mask first. Go to level 1 view now. That's the mask I just created. I can now just copy it to the front. The distance between these two systems is entirely up to you. I'll keep it close though to get the same effect as in my reference image. They're not very far away from one another. Now we can go back to 3D. Select the internal system, this one here at the back. Make sure you get the mass and not the individual panels. That's wrong. Go back and try to get the mass. Once you've got it, go to edit in place. Select the whole system now and use this offset parameter to put in a value half this size. So if you have here 300 like I do, divide that by 2 and put in here 150. Do the same down below and apply. That will shift each panel half its width and half its height and give you this nice staggering effect between the two systems. You can even give panels on this internal layer a different material. Just go to edit type now and duplicate this to panel 4 for example. Under panel parameter, I can now change the material to something darker. Maybe copper in this case. Click OK now and try shaded mode. You can see only the panel I selected has changed. But I can now also select this whole internal layer and set it to use panel number 4. Now the entire thing is now darker. If I really want to get the copper color to come out, I need to go here and tick on render appearance. Click OK. And there you have it. We can now finish this internal layer and see the system in full. Of course, because the panel itself is parametric, you can always tap select one of them like this. Go to edit type and change these two parameter values any way you like. So in here I can do the same as in the family. I can make this a bit thinner, maybe 0 0.25 and do the same for this other one. Maybe give it 86. And you can see that's a lot more close now, maybe better for privacy. Anyway, I can undo now because I quite like the previous effect. This will show nicely in all of your 3D views. Like kitchen, we have now one system at the front and another one we just made at the back. Alright, if you like this tutorial, make sure to subscribe to this channel because we do lessons like this every single day. For now, practice this new trick and I'll see you in the next lesson.